You really have a hemorrhoid that large yep. that you have to sit at an angle? Pretty big. Oh, hot mics. Uh, Sweat Equity Podcast, the number one comedy business podcast in the world. What? You want some real raw dog talk? What? With some no <laughs> pragmatic entrepreneurial advice? Nobody wants that. From those who've been there, like a man, Jake the Snake Plumber, Rosenberg, our guest on the show today, 32 years old, simultaneously very young, and the oldest 32-year-old at the same time. Yes. Interesting. But a the duality sub- of man. A good interview for those wanting to be an entrepreneur. He keeps it simple. Kiss, baby. Stupid. Uh, listen to us on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, OnlyFans, Substack, uh, your mom's Sony Walkman. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one drag-and-drop customizable website creator. Don't need to know code. You can have an online store like sweatequitypod.com forward slash store if you want some fucking awesome tank tops. Yes. Um, I want money. Don't don't get these WordPress assholes to, to tell you otherwise. Squarespace is the shiznit. And if you want to get the hookup, holler if you hear me, hit the link in the episode description. If you don't need to make a website and you want to help the show, go to the merch store on sweatequitypod.com or you can be our BFFs by subscribing to the pod, throwing that five-star review, write a little something in there, and share this. Share the show. Please. Why won't you share it? Please. Just share it with someone. Please share the show. You could have done it by now. He's, you turn Eric Italian. I'm Italian. Uh-huh. 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 Boom. What? What yeah. about my sweat equity? It's me, a Bobby. Sweat equity. Sweat equity. My sweat equity. My, my sweat equity. What about my sweat equity? Jake? How are you? Can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. We're rolling. We we just we go live on tape, man. Oh, cool, uh, man. Why don't you, because I don't want to fumble through people's, uh, you know, uh, call to action links or, or bio. Why don't you tell us about yourself real quick, 30-second 30, 30 elevator pitch, and then where people can find your product. Sure, that's perfect. So I'm Jake. I started Crete. It's 30-second skincare for guys, so it's a nice little... 30 second intro. I started because I had a ski accident back in 2017. It forced me into understanding skincare. Um, I was just a normal guy who used bars of soap and things like that. And and now I know the best products for guys to use. It takes 30 seconds or less to learn about them and use them. And we sell online at Crete, K R E T E dot C L U B, Crete dot club. I, I want to ask about the ski accident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we're, we, we've reversed our order of uh, asking every guest the first time on the show this question. First of all, how old were you when you had the ski accident? 27. <laughs> not, okay, well, not 13. 26, well. 26 yeah. I want to get your origin story right. That's why we're, we're putting this at the, at the top of the interview instead of the end. What advice would you give your 13-year-old self? Um, the same I got from my parents that when you do something and you build it yourself or you earn it yourself, it's a thousand times sweeter and better and means more to you than if it's given to you. A hundred percent correct on that. What's the, what's the value of free? It's zero. I, yeah. I didn't know what you wanted no, to say. I just, I'll I take just, some free I, stuff here and there as long as I'm that. working hard, you know, I just but, wanted to go Pacino on that. <laughs> just really, it's a zero. Um, yeah. and so, All right, so it sounds like you grew up in a a pretty good household if you had parents uh, dispensing that kind of advice. Yeah, they they raised me well, and they always, you know, whether it was grades or other things, you know, they put pressure, but not too much. You know, I could get it. I could do poorly on a test if I I did, but as long as I studied and tried, I ended up doing well in school, so it wasn't really a worry for them. But, yeah, I mean, it felt good to get good grades. It felt good to make more money in a business. It's not, you know. So we're not at, at, at Asian American strict uh, level of getting all A's, or you're, you're gonna it's kneel on Jewish, rice it was on the ground. Jewish American level, so uh, it's pretty, it pretty close. That's pretty, way more pretty intense. That's more psychological. Yeah, <laughs> that's a long yeah. game. It's not as blunt. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's a lot of extracurriculars. There's piano lessons and singing and martial arts and chess and all those things. Yeah. Now we we like to say on the show we we love our Jays. We love the the Jews. I don't know what Kanye's talking about. I don't know why people hate on Jewish people throughout history. I don't get it. But um, all my Jewish friends, I love going to their houses. The dinners I'd have over lockers, there. Lockers, love lockers. Oh, dude, the conversation, yeah, everybody's I'm funny. I'm a fan of Jewish food, to be honest. I think that's the one thing we need to improve. That's okay. why we Jews in New York, because I'm from New York originally, we just ate Italian food. It's like, they, they did that better. We'll, we'll go with theirs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, gefilte fish can only get you so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, uh, it doesn't sound like you're orthodox. I hate it's really it. tough. Uh, no, I'm, I'm reform. I had a bar mitzvah, but, you know. Not not very religious. So you're like the Catholic version of Jewish, like most of my Catholic friends are. Like, I'm Catholic, yeah. and they never go. Yeah, exactly. I've known in my life have been on the more religious side. To there, be honest, there's some de- they're well, religious about it. it, it I, I put that spread just like there's some devout Jews I, uh, friends I have. You know, they go they go every Friday night. I, I have those Catholic friends, but for the m- most part of both, most are like yeah yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm down with it and then don't do yeah. much of the thing. And there's yeah. a cultural element to all these things too and there's community elements so you don't necessarily have to believe in all the actual tenets of religion to kind of be a part of the community. Yeah. Uh, and so you're, you're always going and I'm like, why are you? And you're like, I just like to sit in a quiet place and listen to a guy tell me stuff that maybe I didn't think yeah, about. I, those guys for me are like, Peter Thiel and podcasts and whoever. Sure. You know. Peter Thiel. I have my business. I have my business people, my business priests I listen to more than anything else. You know? Gary Vandacek. <laughs> no. That's so culture. Vandacek. Vandacek. I don't know. It seems like he's pretty good at sounding very busy. Well, he, he, right. well yeah. He makes, biz, he makes money off of the hustle culture that he yeah. kind of uh, makes fun of a lot. Yeah. Uh, no great, excuses. By the way, great interview on the Tim Dillon podcast with uh, Gary V and him. Uh, Gary V's actually got a pretty good sense of humor about. Yeah, that. he does. I mean, that's why, you know, I don't hate him. It's just like, I don't get inspired from that. I want to know like the guy in the back room building the things and talk to that guy, not the front facing guy who's going to tell you about the culture and the spiritual, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. I want to know like, how to build the thing, not energy and constant hustle and making an nft I, lo- I love the wrestler aspect to it i love the showmanship i don't want right. to do it personally i know we need to just start <laughs> you guys watch wrestling growing up yeah um yes, we're in tampa I man did. so we're all like the all wrestling the, epicenter oh, yeah. of the world all the wrestlers have houses down here so we're kind of all over around it at all times yeah. You know, I used to watch it a lot. I was a WCW guy, Bill Goldberg, and Diamond Dallas Page, my, my well, people. You're a tad bit younger than us, I, I believe. We're, we're Or is it your skin that tells the, oh, the, 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 30, the tale? I'm 32, so what? 32 and a half. You look like you're yeah. 21. Yep. Uh, I'll take it, man. It must be so the, I, I mean, the I grew serum. Up, uh, Snooka, Bob Snooker, someone Snooka. I had that. My dad was big. Wrestling guy, I don't remember. I just found out my parents secretly watch wrestling every week. <laughs> to this day, they I, they never told me for thirty years. Are you joking around right I now? I swear to God, they watch like Monday Night Raw or or SmackDown or one. What? Of them. Never told me. Never throughout my childhood. Nary a wrestling what? event on, and my parents are like, I, I was trapped. At my cousin's wedding. We should become wrestlers, dude. And I was in a car, and they were like, oh, yeah, we watch wrestling uh, every week. And I was like, I got the outfits down. Oh, right? Huh. Yeah. Well, Personas are down. We're good. We, on that. we just try to put a little zhuzh on it for you. Uh, we felt we needed to be classier than our, our normal tank tops. Well, you had a hat on, and I was like, you can't beat me. So I, look, right to Jess's closet. This is, this is the nicest white T-shirt I have. I did it for you guys. Oh, that's cool. Well, it's got sleeves. So all the way. you went to that's Penn. Generous. You went to Penn. You're a smart dude. Oh. I, I got a bunch of friends that went there. All very uh, – everybody I've met from Penn can't, can't say enough good things. Very smart dudes. Uh, but real like realistic Ivy kind of people. Ivy Leaguers? Yeah, it was called the social Ivy because it wasn't, you know, people would work hard, but we'd also go out hard. You know, Philly was an easy city. It was cheap and fake IDs worked. Not that you should do that, but they worked time mm. at least, you know. Um, and so you could just actually have a good time. You could go out and be social. If you're at like Cornell, you're up in the middle of nowhere. Mm. You're at Harvard, it's a little too devoid of social whatever. Not completely. You can have fun at those places, but Philly was just 
it was a lot more fun of a school. There were a lot more like normal people and other colleges around that we could have fun at. So he ended up coming out of there studying hard, but also having had fun. And around knuckleheads, like Harvard is in Boston, around a bunch of knuckleheads there. You got, you want to go to the Wawa, get a water? Get a hoagie? Wawa? Oh, there's a Wawa like a block from me for a couple of years. You did the Boston accent. No, that's the Philly accent. That's the Philly jersey. You want to get a water? Oh. I, I thought you were doing. I thought you were trying to do Boston. No, 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 no. I thought he was trying to do Boston, but then he said Wawa, which is a Philly. Yeah, person. but I was confused because usually they say pack the car, and I was like, "Are you trying to do I'm that?" No, I was just saying, saying like, Wawa, and then not understanding there's love, no R there to do. I love schools like University of Chicago is right in the heart of Chicago, like these really big academic tentpole schools that are in the middle of a bunch of knuckleheads. No, uh, yeah, you know uh, but that that school. You know their their unofficial catchphrase is "Where fun goes to die." So what? What uh, University of Chicago? University of Chicago. Yeah. How dare you, David Booth? The Booth School of Business. That was my I old mean, boss. My dad actually went. My dad got his MBA from 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 University of Chicago. Well, I'm gonna so I'm gonna call random. David Booth up. The namesake. Apparently, it's not a fun school undergrad. I don't know. No, he I would, I, I your dad imagine. probably did crazy shit. He doesn't want to tell you about. And he's like, it's it was stupid. I, you know, you wouldn't a, like he it. He was a Wall Street guy in the eighties, but I don't. Oh, think okay. I don't. He think partied he harder than you ever have. I Wall Street, I don't know. eh? I wish he did. So Wall Street in the eighties? Yeah, he's Come like a pretty buttoned-up guy. I don't yeah, think, he's, I don't think that's now him. he is. When he got home, yeah, uh, yeah. but it's, it's Wolf Those of Wall 80s. Street. I've asked, him, I've asked him bluntly. He said he's seen a lot, but I don't know. We'll see. I'll ask him. A well, someone later. has to I actually up close. do stuff, I guess, <laughs> in those places, you know. Yeah, they still the businesses had to operate. Yeah, um, I find those environments. Uh, yeah, you got to pry your dad for more of those stories because he's yeah. holding back, like. My dad won't tell me. Ask him if he wants to be on a podcast. Let's yeah, do some let's, let's get Father movies. Son on here and just yeah. really uh, flush everything out. Um, so 2017, you said uh, you got in a ski accident. What are we talking? How gnar, how gnar is this ski accident? Um, I've been a good skier my whole life. So when you, you, know, you do a crazy day oh, and man. Then in the trees, whatever. But like, I was actually coming in. I was like the last one out there. It's just a blue. I'm like you know, hauling ass. I was cruising down it pretty easy run i hit some ice and my ski pops off and hits me in the face while i'm standing like a sword so right there cuts my nose open oh, fucking terrible mm. rolling around on the ground i don't know how graphic i'm supposed to get but very graphic the, as gra- the, we're on only fans you can do whatever you want man cool well it broke my nose in a couple places including in the back of it so i was choking on my own blood which is pretty <gasps> oh, terrible. Fuck. yeah i had i had my headphone in so i said hey siri call 911 and it worked wow so I was, like, holding snow on my hands my hands were getting like frostbite because i couldn't mm-hmm. move them and i couldn't like touch my phone because it was they were they were wet. So ski patrol came. I got them to take a picture of me with the thumbs down. There's like blood all over the place. It's, it was a pretty absurd situation. Toboggan down, emergency stitches. Fly back to LA. More cosmetic stitches. Um, lasering, microneedling for a year and a half. Have to stay out of the sun. What are you doing work wise at the time? Um, I was running a software company, so I've always had my own company. I've never actually been employed. So you're a serial entrepreneur. I know it's in your bio, yeah. I got, but, you know. Uh, you like I, to I check those, those bios. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I take them with a grain of salt. Some people are like, I have an Etsy store that sells, you know, a turquoise jewelry. You're like, uh, well, yeah, I, no, okay. I've, I've had multiple actual businesses. So serial entrepreneur, you know, it's it either is like, oh, wow, that's awesome. You've probably done a couple of cool things. Or it's, oh, you can't actually execute on anything. You just keep bouncing around and you can make a nice pitch deck, but nothing ever gets done. And there's more of the right. latter than there is of the former. Yep. Um, I've actually had a couple of companies that were successful and, and, you know, you know, I am, like I said, 32, I started stuff in college. So I've been doing this for 12, 13, 14 years. Yeah. Uh, 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 software investments and in fashion. Um, any, any investment tips you got for us or fashion uh, tips um, or fashion or software tips? Uh, keep it simple with fashion. I don't know. Like I, I agree. I don't chase trends. Right. Nice suit. I don't wear suits a lot, but like, Nice suit, a nice shirt that fits you. It's like, yeah, not, uh, my hair crazy color. You know, whatever. I don't know. Yeah, your mom's, uh, your mom's <laughs> hairnet. What? What is that you're wearing? I don't know. It's got. I don't know what this thing is. It's like it's an old lady. You oh, look, I thought oh. you were talking about. I actually wear a hairnet because I, I learned chemistry and produce our stuff. So it was like in our some of our emails is me in a hairnet. Oh, really? 
Yeah, okay, so you're in it. You're 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 a tinker. You're you get oh, in there. Absolutely, yeah. I'm 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 there from the second we have a new idea. Let's build it together. Let's get in the lab. Let's do whatever. And then once it gets big enough and we have process, I'll outsource it because I I know I can manage that thing because I know about it. Interesting. Yeah. What would you, what advice would you give to someone that has a product they're trying to get off the ground, like Crete? Um, you know, products are a little tricky, right? You know, there's a lot of ways you can go about making them. You can do it your yeah. way, which seems like R and D. Probably a lot of frustrating, but cre- creative and the ability to create a solution to figure out this yeah. product that you know I can you can make it work Customer within the focus. cost constraints. Yeah. But like, exactly. or you can go another route. You can get it kind of just labeled and be a branded kind yeah. of thing. Oof. I mean, look, if you are like, I get approached by a lot of influencers who want to white label our stuff. And I'm like, no, no, thank you. Like we're, we're doing great. You don't get to basically co-opt our, all of our R and D for now. I want to do some co-branding things later, but with sweat equity. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. But this show? Essentially, essentially it's like, if you're an influencer, you should go and <laughs> white label stuff because you have a following. You've conquered the marketing element of the funnel, right? So you should just go to somebody that has a product that you like that your customers will probably like slap your name on it and get it fulfilled because you can just tweet, you can post on Instagram, you can do a TikTok video. If let's say you have millions of followers or a YouTube video or whatever. Um, and you have the marketing then. If you have to do the marketing yourself, you have to start thinking a lot more seriously about unit economics and the funnel and actually running a profitable business, which requires significantly more skills. And the biggest piece of advice that I give to everybody is that you can learn anything on the internet. Yep. I'm not, you know. Yeah. Free everything you know there's a lot of entrepreneur classes like maybe founder has a good one it was like 1500 bucks that was still very good and i think worth the money and there's a lot of audiobooks but for the most part i taught myself chemistry at a professional level on google and youtube what it took was two months of and me watching videos and taking notes and learning it mm-hmm. and taking the initiative myself so it took the resource of time and dedication it didn't take money so for people starting companies like if you want to learn how to market Go watch some free videos on email marketing and go set up Clavio or MailChimp or something and build an email folder. It's not rocket science. Uh, go I, get certified. There's so many little certification thingies you can get. Uh, and, yeah, and, you don't even necessarily need the certification. It's just the knowledge. Right? I like it's the little right. badge, though. I know. I, I like the, the humble brag. I want the thingy. I want the little badge thingy. I want, I want my yeah. gold star. I want people yeah. to know. I need I, the pat I on the back. I avoid LinkedIn and all that shit so much. Like I can't do LinkedIn because everyone's just like, oh, look at me. I'm certified in this. And I'll like attempt to hire them and I'll talk to them like this person I don't know what the fuck they're talking uh-huh. about. Yeah. We uh, we uh we enjoy LinkedIn for its its fakeness. Right. <laughs> like yeah. a third party observer of LinkedIn. I get a lot of shit for my close family and friends or like you're gonna post some of your stand up jokes on there. I'm like, yeah, that's one job I do. It's being a fucking comedian. Right. Uh, so, and that's just another place to put it in a fucking feed of nothingness of I'm like, doing a thing where I say yes to everybody. Say, oh, to all the garbage. Hey, I'd like to see what you have going on. You want to have a chat? Sure, let's have a chat. Whatever. I there was a Never guy know. on LinkedIn who messed who like cold messaged me a year or two ago, and he was a marketing guy, and he had this top hat on, and he kept saying <laughs> the tip of the hat or top of the hat or something like that. I was just like, that was his beginning, middle, and ending of like every message he sent me. And I was so curious that I actually clicked in, and he, he was just like a crazy guy. How kooky like, is he? Yeah. <laughs> it was so Come fast. On, get him on the pod. That was like two, three years ago. I was like, I'm done using LinkedIn because we have some advisors and people who are like pretty, pretty big in, in the skincare space. Hold on, let me... It seems like you're, you're at a different stratosphere than most, I would say at your age, uh, trying to get it going. You know, like yes, one of our advisors was the former chief people officer at Dollar Shave Club. So if I need to find someone, I was like, hey, dude, can you? We need a new email person. He he goes and finds him. I'm not about to go search on LinkedIn and spend my time and my whatever. It's just, it's too much. Well, time is a commodity. It seems like you value yeah. that very much. And you go, I'm good over in these sectors. I need to delegate this out to the mm-hmm. to people that are either going to gobble up that time that I don't want to waste. You know, you probably know the value of your time versus other people. Absolutely. We're outsourcing a lot of things that we, we previously were doing all of our manufacturing in-house. It's taking too much of my time. So earlier today, we figured out a place to outsource. We outsourced some products and we, we kept some in-house. 
So we're doing that. Customer service is getting more automated. That's staying in-house. We do our ads in-house, but I'm hiring more people to do it. Customer yeah, service you, in-house, I'd say uh, keep it that way. Customer service has to stay in-house because it just you need to know what your customers are doing. Yeah. It's just we need to automate it. We need to have better emails that answer your questions so it doesn't end up needing a person to actually answer it. Well, if you want but, us to roast yeah. battle your marketing funnel, if you want us to, to talk shit about it, that's our favorite thing to do because that's yeah, how absolutely. we audit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, we do That's an offline conversation be, or off-air conversation usually. Oh, fair enough. Okay. Okay, okay. we can do it here, but uh, we don't care. Yeah, but. fine. We'll do it off. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I got a feeling it's, uh, it's buttoned up and it is bulletproof. We forget, we forget <laughs> to self-promote ourselves to be able to, like, let us just audit it. We'll do it for fun. Uh, yeah. d- just because uh, I think it makes us better at strategy overall when we're doing these exercises yeah. for people. Yeah, I mean, we do all our ads in house and everything because that way, if we know a message is working, two days later we have five five versions of that message in a new in a new mm-hmm. format, yeah. I, new first two seconds, so people see a different visual and they think it's a new ad. Those kinds of things. There's a lot of simple strategies, but yeah, I mean, it's just a grind. You know, you do it one day at a time, and then you have like over a week you make your email flows better and then the next week you make your ads better and the next week you start focusing on a new product and a year passes and you're like oh my god we are a completely different company we kind of have that experience every two months we look back and we think holy shit like our sales are up and our products are more and like it's it's every two months we really see like a monumental shift forward that's great so, yeah and you have a feeling if, but it's a lot it's a lot of work people are listening as this episode comes out there's a black friday sale 41 percent off that's an odd number uh Interesting. of Interesting. all products um, do that on purpose that's that's by design yeah yeah i i, I figured as much I, well, we need to know the reasoning it probably sticks um, in your head a little bit differently the average for Black Friday sales is 37% and we have great margin. So we said, let's do 40. And then I said, no, let's do 41 because it's one more than 40. So if someone else is doing a 40% discount, we'll be one more than them. Huh? Okay. And it's not the 3D chest we thought. <laughs> pretty straightforward. Yeah. What was that? It was pretty straightforward. Yeah. We, it's, it's, it's funny and it's weird. And if we give a weird discount, it makes you think and it makes you remember it. You know, everyone gives nice round discounts. It's like, well, let's not yeah. do that. We give 11, we give 22, we give 33, and now we give 41. Those are our, like, for various things. And you have yeah, um, you have a three product lines, I'd say, right? It's the hydrating facial serum, the hydrating yeah. body serum, and the head-to-toe bundle, which is yeah, – I'm going to guess is both. Yeah. It is both. We just launched this as the body serum yesterday. So we were actually a one product company until yesterday. Now we're two. We have concealer coming out in probably March. Could be a little, could be earlier. It depends. Chinese New Year slows things down and we get the the components from Taiwan. So it depends on if they are, you know, shipping or not. We got to get some. We were literally talking about this before the podcast started while you were saying, I need to wear makeup. I do. You got, you, we have a new camera set up in here, and it's real zoomed in. And I was looking at I got video of it. This. I'll tell you this. We're defeminizing the whole thing. It's just a performance skin part. Like, if you have a pimple or dark circles, you just do this, and it disappears. We're not doing makeup like lipstick and other beauty products. Okay, that we're was my – Exactly. Perfect. That's, perfect. that's what I needed because I, I, I get razor bumps. Is this going to help me? I have I have one right here. I didn't do it because I thought it would be out of camera, and now I'm calling it out. But I have a couple of like red spots around. You can't see them because we're maybe three seconds before I turned the camera on. I just did this with it on, and it, they disappear. It's just it's great. It works if you're on a date and you have a pimple. If you're going to work and you have dark circles, or if you're on Zoom all day, it's like it's a no brainer. It's there's certain of these products that like women use, but guys should use. Women should use the eyelash thing. That has no need for guys to use it. I mean, guys can use it if they want, but I'm saying it's not. It doesn't form an actual function. You know, doing this and not looking as tired is is you'll have a different reaction from people that'll be more positive. Yeah, let's, so I use that, that that hit the scar on my nose. So that's how I learned about that. Judging by the branding, the website, kind of the 20 minutes we've been talking to you, it, you're kind of minimalist um, or. You know, you want to keep things simple, it seems like, yeah. if I'm getting no the theme. It's kind of just the general catch-all phrase for it. Yeah, I mean, our tagline is 30-second skincare. We want to tell you what our products do, and we want you to use them in 30 seconds or less. Mm-hmm. So we know that the value proposition equation to our customers is, 
what's this product going to do? It's going to make you look younger, better, healthier skin, more confidence. But everyone can say that. Everyone has ads. The denominator, yeah, the numerator, denominator, the denominator is how long and how hard is it going to take for me to get there? If it's like, great, you're going to look good, but it's going to take you six months and a million dollars. Like, that's not really compelling. If it's going to take you 30 seconds and 30 bucks, like, okay, that's pretty compelling. And then the other part of the equation is how likely are you to actually achieve that? And that's where our before and after images and reviews and all those things come in. Well, it, it sounds like you have a foundation of a great product. So you can, yeah. kind of, you can kind of rest on that for everything, right? And then from there on, you, you know the persona you're talking to. Guys don't want to do anything. Yes. So no, they don't. 30 the seconds. branding is very guy friendly. Yeah, 30 and seconds is great. We give you one line on the decorations, all right? That's it. You get one line. And we'll make yeah, it diagonal and it can be diagonal, but that's it. Yeah, we're loyal. I don't know about you, but like your toothpaste. When was the last time you changed brands of toothpaste? Right. I don't know. Um, not on purpose. We got kids, both of us, not together, I wish. Right. Um, oh, but, uh, but yeah, no, uh, my kids. I go between uh, Little throw Mermaid mine away. and. Uh, I don't know. What's the other one? There's a blue one. I do the The point of it is, is usually when guys find a toothpaste and when they think about that question, they're like, oh, I've been using the same toothpaste for 10 years. Lifetime value. Yeah. That's the thing. The lifetime value of skincare for guys is like, we have people, we launch our subscriptions in January. We've gotten one bottle a month, every single month since January. So they're on bottle 11. I can't even use it that fast. I mean, I, and it's free for, well, free. It's a couple cents, you know, but Good it's amazing. We, yeah. we just have such loyalty. We get no returns because when I formulated these products, I made them the best they could possibly be in this product category. I didn't stop formulating until they were there. And so now, you know, the marketing gets it in your hands. Then the product itself, that sells the second, third, fourth bottle. It's like you don't need to see an ad. You've used it on your face. You've felt the tightening. You see your skin looks better. Okay, great. We're done. We've won. You're just gonna keep ordering from us. So. And if and if it's really good, like an Apple product or a um, something that actually works in in a snake oil kind of industry, right? Uh, that is health and and personal care. Yeah. Like, I'm, how many goddamn you rub on your face is? Dude, you go to a chick's shower. And just how many just fucking different bottles? They shop entirely. Two, two different exfoliators, people. really? Two. It's the number of serums that, and like even my girlfriend, she is, I don't know, multiple. And by the way, they're not even all like BS. They're like, she does research and she knows a little bit of retinol serum or retinoid. She'll have a vitamin C, a hyaluronic acid. It's like, mm-hmm. those are three serums. Yeah. You ask a guy with a serum? I don't know. Right. And other people yeah. have three, four, five. It's like, it's too much. We're going to have one moisturizer for your face, one for your body. One sunscreen for your face, one chapstick, one deodorant. We're not trying to have like six products per skin issue. We want to solve a problem. Here's the one product. And then, you know, we'll probably end up solving, when it's all said and done, 90 to 95% of skin issues. You know, whether it's cleaning your face with a facial cleanser that works for most people or a body wash or something like that. And we're going to have, we're not going to have 50 products. We'll have like eight. And you know that when you come, if you have a skin issue, you want something, you'll just, okay, you know, I'm going to buy one of each and I'll just be taken care of. And it's, it's, I don't have to use six of them in a row. There's none of that. And that's powerful because it's like Twitter when it first launched, the 140 character limitation was actually very freeing because it meant you didn't have to write all these paragraphs, whatever. You could just like, it set the tone. Yeah. Say lunch today, send. Mm -hmm. We're kind of like that for skincare. It's like, you come, you have a problem. Find the one, maybe two products, and see you later. It's not Sephora where they're going to sell you fifty things. <laughs> Sephora, dude. Um, yeah, and um, I. So I just can I put this on my my package area, the body serum. I won't put the face serum on there um, unless it's well, another dude's face. They come, they come. You know, uh, I sh- you know, I, I just shaved it down work. real nice. I manscaped to like a one. Make it look bigger. You want it to look younger? Yeah. I want it to look like a baby dick. Uh, no, I... Uh, what, what, what is what is the, the phrase he said? I can neither confirm nor deny. Yeah. Uh, you, you tell us. All right. I I'll, don't see any reason why it wouldn't work, but also, I don't know, From I'm trying to think from like a PR you know, perspective. I don't PPR. know what I would say. <laughs> You run the show, man. You you dictate the message. I mean, look, how about this? Well, look, I'll do a video. Where can we not put it? I'll Where do, do we I'll not do put a it? Video. Directly in the eyeballs, I'm guessing. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll say s- this. If you're trying to use it for another purpose, it dries pretty quickly by design. Oh, okay. So that's a good tip. That. 
That's good. Dip. So it's not, it's not, it's not, let's say a lubrication. I, He's my friends, about, no, 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 not looking for lubrication, hey. more presentation. He's talking about <laughs> it works. It works. Jack, Jack and all. <laughs> no, no, I don't want it for lube, man. I don't need the KY, KY jelly. I got a lady. She likes me to keep it tight. So I go, all right. And then I, I notice a little, cause I, I'm uh, pretty pale downstairs. You know, when you get you, a little bronzer. Yeah. You need, I need a little, yeah. A bronzer really help. Um, uh, no, but I'm saying like I get the red bumps just like when I'm shaving upstairs. Ah, I see. You know, I want to make it camera it ready. Probably work. Do what it I don't see like why it wouldn't. Although I haven't actually tried that. All right, I I will report back once you send us the free swag. Right, <laughs> might make we'll the your Instagram. Don't worry. Smoother and younger looking, so you'll have to let me know. I, you know, um, so are you? You said you're making the product in USA right now. Yes, we make it all in Southern California. So when I started this, I didn't realize that Southern California is like the hub of skincare in America. Mm -hmm. I didn't think many things were made in Southern California other than like movies and shout out Tustin. Yeah, <laughs> but like I didn't think there was manufacturing in California. It's not a very business friendly state. High regulations, no. high labor costs, high cost of living in general. Like it's good for a business like tech or Hollywood where you have multi-billion dollar intangible company. things yeah yeah and 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 software like google that's global powerhouses but for actual manufacturing other than like the tesla plant being here i didn't think it was so much skincare is made here because the margins are pretty good and you can automate a lot of the manufacturing so we make it here um even the places we're looking to outsource and scale to they're all an hour from here yeah. Well, you got to put made in USA and all this stuff. If I, I wouldn't do, just, uh, I wouldn't do just my old boss correct if I didn't throw that out there. We oh. just added proudly formulated and filled in the USA. Oh, man. So I need some. Like, I need some red, white, and blue on the. I, I need say, a little mo emoji bigger. somewhere. Well, we got green. We got green, and and for our holidays, you know, we ain't Irish. Little, These colors don't yeah. run. No, it's uh, almost military green. We got some. Uh, yeah, it's almost, but we didn't really want it to be. We do call the pen. The concealer pen, the camo pen, because that tested the best for guys. Because we didn't want to call it concealer. Yeah, that's pretty badass. Yeah, I no, I like the whole the whole uh, the whole brand world. Your brand story, it's leveraging nice little, a need. Nice yeah, don't get it confused product. with your vape pen, because I would probably they all line do that. up. By the way, so like all our products, so if you have them in a row, they look really nice, like when sitting in your bathroom. Oh, little tinctures. For the OCD I'm man. To do this by the. Oh, camera. okay. I see. That's. I got you. Yeah, and then you know this one comes in on this side, and same kind of thing. That's I like cool. I like a couple of other brands that did similar kind of through like we call it a through line because that's like what it is. Literally, um, I just thought if you can have your products looking really nice in a row, easier photography, more shareable. Influencers will want to do whatever more ads will sell more, and you know. So we went A to Z. What can we do to make it look nicer? We put embossing on the side of the the box, so it's mm -hmm. like. Dry, rough skin, dry skin. We do like a lot of little elements like that that we think elevate it too. Yeah, love it. Add in value. I like the way you think. You know, we were we were a little worried about this bef this interview before we got on because it's like, ooh, I, we don't we don't participate much in this sector. Yeah, I'd say. But uh, you know, I I'm more interested in you as the entrepreneur um, and your kind of whole mel you, if you will, is like keep it very simple make good product, uh, have the, have the, the high quality customer service aspect, you know, do, yeah. are you perfectionist? I mean, yeah, but simply learn chemistry. I mean, well, you're no, autodidactic in that direction, but, which is uh, crazy. Am I perfectionist? Yes. But I also know how to hit send, you know, okay. at some point you, you, you just, you will, you're never going to get to perfect. So just get as close to it. But, you know, it's been ground into me that, like, you also just got to get stuff out there because that's the only way to get the feedback in order to, I hate the word circle back, but to circle back to it, improve it, and constantly the do feedback it. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. launch a product like this, you know. Am I happy with the, the this heat seal? No. But it was the only one we could get in time to launch it on time. So, you know what, in a month when we make another 1,000 or 2,000 more of this, we'll have a better heat seal by that time. And we'll have probably, like, a box that says, you know, probably a slightly better message or there'll be, you know, there'll be just tweaks here and there. Our fulfillment will get a little better. We'll have figured out a rate to negotiate with USPS and we'll save 30 cents or something for you. It's just, you're always improving, but you do have to ship stuff. Well, people think of creative in a product world like Steve jobs. I, I was 
just thinking it'll be funny in 10 years if you are that Steve Jobs kind of guy. It's like the angle needs to be 90 Point five degrees. Well, actually, I am. I, that's you know. No, that's a good thing. I think. No, like, you're not, that's, I mean, for this, yes. If you've been successful, one degrees. Yeah. But if like you've been is. successful, then uh, like you've already you've already had th- three huge businesses run well, right? And so, yeah. at thirty two, you get you to look, a point where you're like, just listen to me. Just shut up. Well, I, I just, no, you don't have to say it after a while. It just people I'm go. Right, I'm I know that's right inside 70% of the percent of the time. When it comes to business ideas, I'm right 65 to 70 percent of the time. And the other 30 percent, I'm an idiot. Like my ideas, you know, they make no sense. And so I empower my whole team to just be like, "Yeah, let's not do that," or maybe this instead. Like my whole team tells me because that's the way we win. It's like I can't just have my ideas win. You know, I still own the company, so if someone comes up with a great idea, and we implement their idea. So the one that Sit- it, so situationally col- collaborative, right? Yeah. So it's like, um, and sixty five percent would be a banger if you yeah. know all the decisions you made are that. Uh, not all of the decisions. It's there's a process. Some, some are bigger than others. Because, like, you know, a lot of people think being an entrepreneur is you just wake up and you can make your schedule. I could start working at noon. It's like, yeah, and then you will have missed four hours of stuff you could have gotten right. done that would have helped yourself. <laughs> So it's like you trade in a nine to five for a twenty four seven. Well, yeah, great. You get to decide what to do in that twenty four seven. It's like okay. I've been th- thinking a yeah. lot about that. Autonomy is really what everybody wants to get to in a professional career. Usually, like uh, I'm not talking entry level people that want to do that forever. I'm talking about like people who have ambition. Eventually, it really breaks down to autonomy when you get to the thing everybody I think wants to do. Right? Mm-hmm. Like I look at the podcasting world. The reason it's so interesting is because you have the autonomy to get whatever show you want out there, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if people try to come at us and like, hey, you need to make your show PG-13, but we'll have Unilever as a sponsor. Be like, it's going to be a tough one. Fuck Unilever. It's going to be a tough putt. I'm like, we can still be poor. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We can't. I don't think we can do that. You would be five minutes. We'd ruin it. To you guys. It's like, for me, it's like the same thing. It's like, I, I only have one speed and and that's do everything I can all the time to try to improve this. And so I'll send Slack or email messages that are like two pages of dense ideas and details. And my team at first, when I hire someone, they're like, what the fuck is going on? Then they started realizing, oh, you sent me enough work to do for a week with details. So, like, we don't have to have calls. We don't have to. I don't have to ask you. I mean, they can always. But so we skipped five meetings. And it's like, oh, great. This is actually easy. You know, you have your speed and it makes you guys successful in what you do. And if you changed it, it would, I don't know, it wouldn't be you. You couldn't carry that on for long. Yeah. And that's a a good way to, uh, what is it, asynchronistically kind of manage away in a bit. But Mm -hmm. You know, your ideas are easy. Ideas are like everybody's pitched you app ideas, right? It's like okay. More than I more than I can even possibly imagine. Execution's yes. what makes the difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, like it's what's Doug Benson, it's a high idea. A high idea. It's just a stone yeah, I, an idea I, without execution is just stone thinking. I worked with uh Oh high idea. <laughs> I liked, I worked with people in the past who thought that ideas were everything like, oh, I thought of an app. What if there was an app that made you a million dollars a day? It's like, okay, great. Build it. And so I always said that apps are like two to three percent, or sorry, ideas are like two to three percent of a company. You need good ideas, but the execution of them is so much more important. Exactly what you said. It's like, you know, and the problem is if you work with someone who values ideas a little bit, not execution... The, uh, the company's not going to go so well. Yeah, so I've seen uh, that with, with companies I've consulted for where there's an ideas guy and an execution guy, and the execution guy's way more important, but the idea guy acts like he's the guy. Yeah, you know? that's where you get the mock turtleneck, the black mock turtleneck, and cool, yeah. you know, and specs. Movie. You know, ideas, look, it doesn't, I don't devalue them if someone wants to pitch an idea to me, but it's like, I, with the app one especially because it, it's, it's like died down. To be honest? But it, I go, to be does, honest. It, does it exist already? Did you do a simple Google search before talking out mean? loud? And if it does exist, why isn't it working? If it doesn't exist, why doesn't it exist? And then that conversation I, gets me out of all of all these pitch ideas. I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. 
why do why, why doesn't or does it exist? And they're like, oh, well, because if they search that, it might ruin their. I know their idea. It's like, yeah. it's like the guy in college. Like, hey, dopamine. Here's the thing: this is a dopamine hit. Or oh yeah. Oh yeah. Know, combination of like, oh my god, this business idea. At this point, I'm so jaded. Where when I'm around a group of friends, <laughs> someone's like, oh my god, this idea. I just go like, it'll never work. Like, you're uh, simultaneously. You know, do you know that if you want to do this, it will be three years before you'll see a dollar and have fun, like you know. And someone will say, so "I have one friend from college who just throws out like these half baked ideas, and he thinks they're genius." And I'm like, "What you're saying would require like manufacturing at a special facility with like <laughs> FDA approval, and, and what you and if you want to sell international, I'm just like incredible advances in quantum computing." computing. That Dude, just yet. Like, okay, cool. How about Dude. this? A bagel where you fill in the hole, you get more bagel for your buck. It's called a bagel. I don't know. Like, th- there's actually an idea I had when I was like uh, eight, um, but I just like using it as my stoner go to. A ba- the bagel. Oh, I used to come up with because I when I had my software company and I used to go up to San Francisco to try to like recruit Stanford kids and all that whatever stuff. Uh, I would just get so annoyed by the like tech pretentiousness and mm-hmm. culture up there that I would just make up a bunch of apps. And one of my favorites <laughs> up was on the Air. What was it? Air, Air, Airbnb was new at the time. So I made up cram share. You like have your car parked in the street and you like rent it out for people to sleep in it at night. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I kind of loved that. You were ahead of your time for San Francisco. And I was like, this is great. And I was, and I tried to make them stupid. Um, one, one of, oh yeah, I told people that my, my family owned the airspace for the internet in the, in the outer space. I can't remember the exact phrasing. So it was the outer net. My family owned the, the <laughs> space right to the internet called the outer net. That's people cool. believe me. And I was like, I've got one yeah. that, that's probably going to end this uh, interview. It's, uh, it's like the food service apps, you know, all the delivery ones. Uh, but it's for hooking up, you know, for submissive guys. It's called Uber Eats Pussy. Nice. Nothing? No sound effect? Nothing? I don't have my thing. Oh, damn. I thought you had the... Oh, oh. damn. All right. Well, um, we, we got to leave on a bad note. We'll cut that out in post. Um, no, I, mean, I will absolutely leave that. By the way, great pun. I, stay, I stand by that joke. Um, but uh, go to Crete, K-R-E-T-E dot club. You gotta, uh, if you're listening on uh, Black Friday weekend as this episode comes out, 41% off all products. Thanks for coming on. If you're ever in Florida, hit us up. Uh, Tampa, you said? We're in Tampa, yeah. Ah, other than Portland, the strip club capital. Uh, yeah, they somehow took our title, but we got the sleazier oh, wow. ones. Right. We're we're more strip clubby than they are, way more. Way more. Five, uh, yeah, maybe. What do you want, a steampunk stripper? What do you want? Like, right. <laughs> chicks with. They have, a vegan, they have a vegan one there called like El Diablo or something. My friend had a bachelor party there. Strip. Floppy tits. It was a nerdy bachelor yeah. party, so we didn't even go to any. Uh, this was years ago, but we found out that that was the case. So they have a vegan strip club there. Well, yeah. when you grow up here, you get it out of your system before you get to college, so it, it becomes passe. Right. You know? Uh, I went to Seven Seas at 14 years old. Yeah, you're like you should. This place, you, you're bad people Ooh, letting us in there. Sounds like one of the nice West Philly ones that we, you know, college. Situation. I walked in. There's a pregnant lady in the shower. Called it Seven Diseases. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a cast and braces and umbros on. I couldn't have looked more like a child. <laughs> right. But I had a Swisher Sweden. Umbros so. to the strip club. <laughs> well, um, all right. Well, thanks for coming on. We'll we'll have to have you back on uh, once you make some some more two month leaps in this. uh... I appreciate that. Yeah. All right, buddy. All right. See you guys. See ya.